right, let's just do a rolling, a rolling zero to 60. Que onda, que paso, amigos, John's Moto Garage. As always, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna take this V-Rod out for a quick ride. So this one's super hard to come by. 2011 burnt orange V-Rod. It's only got like 2,700 miles on it. This one's got this little ding right here on the tank. And then it was down on the right side at slow speed, so it's got some scuffs on the exhaust here, and the foot peg was slightly tweaked. Check this out, pretty rad. That's the gas tank under here. And then this comes off quite easily as well. Bada bing, bada bang. So let's go ahead and jump on, talk the motor a little bit. As always, if you guys dig the channel, you can support it by liking and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at John's Moto Garage. And huge shout out to the patrons. You can support the channel through Patreon as well. It makes up for the occasional video that gets demonetized due to the wheelie hooligan stuff. All right, let's just do a rolling, a rolling zero to 60. Oh my gosh. This thing is a freaking rocket. All right, so the, uh, yeah, Harley-Davidson V-Rod. Again, this is a 2011, just under 3,000 miles. And if you've been following the channel for a while, then you know that about six months ago, I went out and looked at a V-Rod muscle. And I took it for a test ride. I wasn't impressed. I thought, man, this thing's not really that, that gnarly. It doesn't have the torque I expected. I, don't, I didn't understand what the hype was all about. I went home, did some research, and I realized, oh man, power band kicks in at about 4,000 RPMs. I never even got above like 4,000 RPMs on my short test ride. But I, the more I did the research, the more I realized that I had to get my hands on one of these bikes because aside from the Yamaha VMAX and you know, maybe the Triumph Rocket, when it comes to performance and muscle cruisers, this one is pretty much the bike to beat. It's a 1250cc five speed, I believe. And it's a Harley Davidson. Harleys aren't known for performance. They're not known for any of that. They're known for being heavy, slow, clunkety clunky. You know, it's a Harley. But the V-Rod came out in 2002, one of the only liquid-cooled Harleys you could get at the time. And realized that on that first test ride I didn't even tap into the potential on this thing I had no idea what I was dealing with I think these things kick out something like 120 horsepower 86 foot-pounds of torque quarter mile and something like 11 seconds and 0 to 60 in around three seconds so if those numbers don't freak it, freak you out and get your heart racing then I don't know what will and it's a cruiser man a performance cruiser a hot rod a muscle bike And I had been looking ever since. So I've been looking the last six months and they're hard to come by. It's hard to come by a nice newer one that doesn't have a ton of miles and or isn't beat up. And a lot of people are asking top dollar. The interesting thing about this bike is people love it or they hate it. It's not your traditional Harley. And I don't think it really attracts your typical Harley rider. Or at least it doesn't seem to. Why the trepidation? Why all the hate? A lot of people don't dig these bikes because honestly, I think a lot of people don't quite understand what they are what it is they're dealing with. People look at this who dig Harleys and they think that's not a Harley Davidson man, screw it. Harley really dropped the ball on this one. And then people who don't dig Harleys look at it and say, oh, Harley's just trying to be cool and they're trying to do something different. And Harley's almost, they're pretty much always doing something different. They've got their traditional standard bikes, you know, the Dyna, the Softail, the Heritage Classic, the Road Glide, Street Glide road king all those but then they've always got something else they've got the breakout they've got the fxdr they did the uh i'll put a picture of it i'm really drawing a blank right now the goofy one where the seat like floated over the back tire the 
the new uh, new valve pump. Oh my gosh, Altima, bro, you totally cut me off, man. Anyway, Harley's they've always had their traditional bikes, but at the same time they have their uh, innovative and and or trial bikes as well. And you can't blame a company for trying to trying to innovate like that, you know. You got the aggressive stance, you got the drag bars, you lean up over the tank a little bit. You do have the forward controls, which again, I'm not a huge fan of. You can find these with mid controls, slash the controls are kind of, you know, in the, almost like a sport bike. I've seen them like that, but they're hard to come by. But you throw a leg over and this thing is still a complete total blast to ride. And one of the viewers yesterday commented that you don't have to be doing wheelies on this thing. It doesn't matter. You're having a blast on it no matter what. Just because it's such a torquey, grunty, fast motorcycle. Which it really is. This thing's crazy. And I'll be the first to admit, I used to be uh, kind of anti V-Rider. I just I was not a fan of these at all. I didn't dig the look. I didn't dig the style. I just couldn't imagine why I would pick something like this. This didn't make sense. That guy's giving me the lazy eye. There. Let's jump off. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't look like any Harley that you guys have ever seen, right? But it's a monster bike. It's got an interesting, unique look and style to it, and the ride is fun. It's fast. It's more comfortable than a sport bike. It's obviously not going to handle like a sport bike, but it does take and kind of combine the two together. So if you're getting out of sport bikes, but you want to get into something that's still a blast to ride, then this kind of melds the best of both worlds. And it, it reminds me a lot of the M109R, you know, the um, Yamaha Warrior, some of those motorcycles as well. You got the belt drive, five speed, liquid cooled, 1250cc engine. Um, this one is a 2011, come standard with ABS brakes. At some point, I'll post the video um, where I went and picked up the motorcycle. Yeah, beautiful exhaust note. You got the 240 rear wide tire. Somebody had mentioned that the older or the yeah older models had a narrower tire, which would have been a little better for handling. But, but yeah, this one uh, it's definitely a head turner. Turns heads. It's unique looking and the cool thing about this because a lot of people compare other bikes like the FXDR to the V-Rod but the interesting thing with the V-Rod is if you wanted to test out that engine the only way to do it was by getting a V-Rod. The FXDR it's got the same MA114 that you can find in all your other motorcycles off the line all those other soft tails but for the V-Rod this is only in the V-Rod if I'm not mistaken. Comment below if you've seen that engine in any other motorcycle, but to my knowledge, they only put it in this bike. And so to experience the 1250cc punch, you have to get the Harley V-Rod. There's no other way about it. And again, it's crazy. It's like a 1250, but it's such a powerful bike and it really is a blast to ride. Even for me, hating the forward controls and everything, I jump on this thing and I have a blast. So I'm 5'8", forward control is a little bit stretched out. I imagine on long rides, it wouldn't be the most comfortable. Um, total blast. I'm going to jump back on, head back to my Casa. But there you have it, just introducing the V-Rod to the channel. It is, I, I'm, I'm not going to be keeping it. So, you know, it won't be here forever. But I had to get one and this, the right deal came along. So I picked it up and sure enough, it it definitely lives up to the hype and the expectations. If, uh, if not exceeds them. Oh man, where am I going? I'm like heading into the eye of the storm with, with the uh, traffic up here. This is not good. Wanted to get like a quick zero to 60. Ain't happening, bro. See how crazy these things are? The first thing I thought when I rode this, I couldn't believe how smooth and responsive it is for being a Harley. I'm used to a super clunky gearbox. I'm used to... I mean, you don't necessarily think performance when you think Harley, and riding this, I was uh, definitely blown away. But I have.
have to say, if you were to hand this to me and say this or an M109R, for example, I would go for the V-Rod. And I don't know the specs off the top of my head, but I think this would, uh, I think this would out, out handle and perform the V-Rod with equally skilled riders. I really do. I think it would outperform the, the M109R rather. So long story short, I used to hate the bikes. Since doing some research and jumping on and actually riding this thing, I can say I'm a huge fan. I can totally see what all the hype is about. I think they're probably one of the more underrated motorcycles now that I ride one. They're one of the ones that's most hated, um, but undeservingly so. They really don't deserve the hate that they get. Woo! Yeah, it is total blast, total blast. It's gonna be a fun bike. Um, I'm not gonna be keeping it, like I said, but I found a good deal and had to pick it up and see what it was all about. And definitely no disappointments. It's like I said, exceeds my expectations. And there you have you guys, the uh, the V-Rod. Kind of like the Hayabusa, once I ride it and understand what the hype's about, I learn to appreciate it. And I don't really mind the way it looks. I feel like it, you know, it has a unique look and style to it. So anyway, I'm digging it. All right, as always, it's John's Moto Garage. If you dig the content, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Adios. Hasta luego.